So let's start off with this song. Why do we know that? Because the Lord is my shepherd. This is what David says in this song. And he says also, I shall not want. He making me lie down in green pastures. He leaded me beside still waters. He restored my soul. He leaded me in path, path, paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. And guess what? My cup runneth over. <laughs> After that, what's going to happen? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Thank you, dear Lord, for your word. We pray that it would be nourishing to our bodies. I pray that you give the people a, 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 a spirit to hear what the, the spirit is saying, Father God. And I'm praying, Father God, you also, Father God, would increase in my life, Father God. You would increase mightily, Father God, and that I would decrease right now, Father God, and you would take full control over my mouth, my mind, my lips, my emotions. I give you complete control, dear Lord. And I ask you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I want to give a shout out to all the, you know, the worshipers that went out Sunday. You know, uh, Miss Vanessa had a, a little thing to do with it. We appreciate you, Miss Vanessa. You know, Malvo, Minister Brian, you know, Christine, we had a, uh, Jaden, we had, uh, who else we had? Who? Brittany and Nicole? Amen, amen, amen. We even had the LeBron squad. It was nice, y'all. It was a pleasant thing to be. It was a good thing, man, in the midst. Right before that Zodiac they got, you know, the Spirit of God. <laughs> and Jay Malville, Jay Malville. Jay Malville was hopping around like he had a sweet tart in his mouth or something. That brother was hopping, more. Now, boy, you was cutting up, boy. I like that, man. And anything, I, did I miss anybody, y'all? Did I miss anybody? All right, all right. I just want to give a shout out. Thank y'all, thank y'all. That was a blessing. But uh, if you was here last time, I talked about these first two verses. We talked about the Lord uh, being Jehovah. Not only the Lord being Jehovah, that's the God that we're going to serve, that's the God that we serve, and that's the, the God that we serve. We're not going to be serving no other gods that are lording over us. The God Jehovah that they talk about in this first verse, that's the God that we're going to serve, the God of this Bible. And the God that we found out, uh, he is our shepherd. Just like we have a shepherd over our, uh, this house, Pastor Omar, Bishop Omar, watching over our souls. He has a shepherd over him watching over uh, 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 his soul and our souls, you know. And this was the great shepherd. And as, as we found out, we found out that if we have a great shepherd like that, Ms. Vanessa, we shall not want. Because <laughs> the shepherd will supply all our needs. He supplied our, our protection. He supplied our, our nourishment. He will supply our, our uh, 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 quench our thirst. And he will lead and guide us. We found out about that. And that, that's why in this first verse it says, I shall not want. As we look in verse 2, we, we also continue to, to find out that he maketh us lie down in green pastures. Whether we want to or not. We talked about you would rather him uh, make you lie down in green pastures with a soft hand into some soft grass, into some uh, 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 good, clean nourishment, instead of him having to, to break some, even ha having him to cause something in your life that will make you, make you, make you lie, lie down. Some of us as Hebrews, you know, we're a little stubborn. We got a little brick head. We, our head is hard like a concrete. And sometimes God got to bring out the jackhammer. God got to bring out the excavator. God got to bring out the dynamite kit. Because you're too stubborn. And then sometimes he got you to make you lie down. Not, not, not to hurt you, not to hinder you, not to harm you, but to, to make you sit down and think about things. Think about who your God is. Think about who this God is. Think about 
who you need to be serving in this time instead of serving some drugs, instead of serving some other uh, man, woman, instead of serving a job, instead of serving a car, instead of serving, let these things lord over you. God got to sit you down and, 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 and it's something about when, when God got to sit you down. It's something about when you, you're sick. It's something about when you're broke. It's something about when you're in the hospital, how you, how you have a change of, uh, in your mind of things. Things get into focus. Things get into a, a proper perspective. <laughs> you learn that these things that you've been lording, uh, been lording over, you ain't really what it think you, you thought it was. And when you sit down, when God got to make you lie down, you find out about these things. <laughs> and, and, and God in his amazing uh, providence of things, he, 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 he bring you back. The, the funny thing about it is those things that you desire, the things that you hurt, God is going to give you those things. But he's going to give it to you in your timing because God knows when you need these things or when you can have these things or when you can handle these things or when you have the capacity to handle these things that you desire. Because I hear people say this all the time. I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a billionaire. But you can't handle a thousand dollars. God gave you a thousand dollars, you spend it all. You come back with a dollar. <laughs> so how, how God is gonna give you a million dollars when you can't be trusted with a thousand dollars? But God, when He lies you down, but God, when He He puts you in green pastures, He can teach you some things, Ms. Linda, because you ain't got nowhere to go. Matter of fact, you can't go nowhere sometimes. Matter of fact, see, matter of fact, God say, I got you. I got you. You've been running around. You've been not paying attention to this and that, but now I got to sit you down and talk to you slow. Y'all know what that means when somebody got to, let me, let me talk to you a little slow. <laughs> God got to sit you down and talk slow to you so you can have some understanding. Don't despise these times, my people. When they happen, God is still control. Hey, it don't feel good, and I don't wish it on you, and I don't want it to happen myself again. Because I didn't been in them places where I'd be like, God, I ain't going to never do this again. You ain't got to uh, put the concrete on me. You ain't got to put the dynamite on me, God. Because it's something about how he, 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 he knocks down that muscle, he knocks down that strength, he knocks down that, the, the mightiness that you have, think you have in yourself, and he gets your attention and say, <laughs> you're not really big as you think you are. You're not as bad as you think you are. You're not as smart as you thought you are. You're not as this and that as you thought you are. It's something about when God got to sit you down. Something about it. And he went on further to say in verse 2, he leaded me beside still waters. The God that we serve, Mr. Shashon, Ms. Shashon, is not going to lead us into troubled waters. That might, that might sound contradictory because of what I was just saying. But when God do that, he got a purpose in mind. He got an end in mind. You see, you're looking at the, the thing that's happening, but God looking at five years, God looking at 10 years, God looking at way down the street to see that this thing is going to get you to where I need you to be. But sometimes God leaves you, and oftentimes, I, I'm saying this as in to know the heart of God. God want to lead you beside still waters. You see, when you see still waters, you could just see still waters. You could be in a boat and see still waters, and it will calm you down. Hey, TP, it will calm you down. You're just looking at that water, it will calm you down. So what that means is God is going to lead you by some things that's going to cause stillness in your life, that's going to cause peace in your life, that's going to cause some calmness in your life. I don't know about y'all, I need those things. I need, I need a double dose, I need a big gulp of those things. A 44 ounce. I'm talking about a 44 ounce of Sprite or, you know, Dr. Pepper, not a 40 ounce, 44 ounce. Y'all know in the hood what that, that, that y'all know in the hood what that is, that 44 ounce be, be a quarter. <laughs> but look, we gotta get, for, get off those sodas. It's not good for the kidneys. Not good for that. It's too much sugar, too much sugar. But God wanna lead you in a place of calmness and peace. As I get older, as I get, Miss Lou, Miss Mary, boy, y'all full deep, boy, y'all power squad right there. Cool. As I get older, Miss Lou, I crave peace. Like, I don't like to be around a lot of noise, boy. I tell you, I, <laughs> I be at my parents' house, them little, my little nieces and nephews come, I put my hands on my head, I be like, man, can y'all quiet down? I'm trying to gather some peace. I love y'all, but I need a little peace. You know. <sighs> I said I wasn't gonna cut up. God, it didn't last long, y'all. But anyway, 
Let's move on to verse 3, my people. And what verse 3 says, he restored my soul. <laughs> he leaded me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. When I, I read that scripture to Miss, Miss Linda the other day, and I, I, it just kept popping that, that phrase, he, he restored my soul. But as I was looking at my notes, I, I, had, I had to go back a little bit. I had to, I had to reverse and, and clear up some things so y'all could get it a little better. So I had to make, it, make some understanding within my mind so I could tell y'all, so y'all could have some understanding. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times I'll be having some understanding, I'll be getting some things from God, but it makes sense in my mind. But when I tell it sometimes, it, it don't make sense to others. It don't make sense to people. So at, my job as a teacher is to make it make sense to y'all. High spiritual things and, and, and bring it down in layman terms. And that's my job. And so as I looked at this scripture, he restored my soul. I thought about something else. You know, anybody that spent a little time around, I see this up here, you know, I, I like classic cars, I like old school cars, I like that. Me and Brother Joshua was talking about them res restoration of the cars. I love it. I grew up around, you know, old school cars, Brother Kim, my uncle, I'm seeing it, and, and it just grabbed a hold of me. You know, it's just something that do me. I, 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 God has given me the ability to see stuff done before it actually happens, you know, having the, the vision to see things, like as in, uh, I, I, I might see an old house, Y'all might see an old house and y'all might see something broken down on y'all street, but I don't see that. I see a fixed up house. I see a nice house. I see, I see, I see cabinets in there. I see paint on that. That's what I see. My ability to look at the, the, the thrown away things, the discarded things, and look at the possibilities that it holds. <laughs> and so I, I, I thought about that. If you're going to restore some, whether it's cars, whether it's furniture, whether it's jewelry, you got to find it first, Joshua. <laughs> and, and not only find it first, but you got to find the right uh, 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 opportunity, the right product, the right candidate to be restored. And before we can get to uh, 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 restoration, I have to talk about my point two, recovery. You see, God has to recover you before he can restore you. God has to go looking for you. God has to go search you out. God has to meet with you. God has to, to, to get your attention. That's why we have the evangelistic uh, 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 ministry, where they're going out there, where they're going out Bryce, where the other people going out and looking for people to restore, looking for God, not them, but God to restore, to recover. We go in, we go in the hood. I, <laughs> Uh, I had a long day Saturday, and I, I went just make a pass. I was, I was in the corner with my window down, just kind of peeping, you know, when they was out there in uh, Fightingville, St. Anthony uh, uh, Park. And I was so surprised, I was so uh, blown away how much that neighborhood had declined. And I was like, man, wow. But it, it did something to me because I don't see nobody spending a lot of time but us trying to go get those souls out there. God is sending us to get the people that others have thrown away. God is sending us to the people that when they look at those people, they, they try to run away. You try to lock your doors. I'm, I'm telling you, use wisdom, but we got to go and rescue those people. God is in the rescue business. Then before he can restore you, he has to recover you. <laughs> I, I'm thinking about a boat that sunk down in Lake Martin or sunk down in Sidmore Point in Henderson. Before you could try to fix that boat, you got to go get that boat in the water. Some of us are stuck in that water right now where God is trying to recover you. God is trying to pull you out of that stuff. God got his, 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 his tow truck backing up and he's pulling you out of that muddy ditch. Whether you cause the wreck or not, God is trying to tow you out of that, that, that stuff that you've been stuck in. God is trying to recover you. You see, <laughs> it, it, it says, we're talking about the prodigal son in Luke 15, 24. He says, for this my son was dead and is alive again, for he was lost and is found. You see, before you can be found, you got to be lost. <laughs> Some people, uh, uh, when God find you, you tell God, I'm already found. I don't, need, I don't need you to, uh, to get me. I don't need you to rescue me. I don't need you to recover me. I'm, a, I'm already, I, I've been already recovered. 
<laughs> and guys say, all right, the more the merrier. So I mean, I got to pull out my, my jackhammer before I, I get you out of that concrete. Because you're stuck in concrete. <laughs> Not only you, 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 you don't see yourself stuck in concrete, but others can see that you're stuck in concrete. Others have been praying for you. God, come get this person out of the concrete. They got the sledgehammer, they got the grenades, they got the, 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 the sledgehammers. Some of us don't think we need to be rescued. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Before Christ, I thought my life was pretty good. I thought I was pretty clever. I thought I was pretty smart. I thought I had things going on. But God, when God came rescue me, when God came chasing after me, when God backed up his tool truck and got me out of that mud, I said, man, I don't know nothing. <laughs> Matter of fact, the more I found out about Christ, the more I found out in life, the more I found out how much I didn't know. I'm sure a lot of people can echo the same. When, I, when I, I started learning about this word, when I started learning about Christ, the king wanted to have a relationship, the God who knows everything and who has everything and owns everything, is in control of everything, want to have a relationship with puny me, me, I said, God, I got to serve you. Whether it hurt or not, I got to serve you. I should give him my servitude, I should give him my, my worship, I should give him all the glory because of just that. He came and sought you out to rescue you. <laughs> he came looking at you at three o'clock in the morning when nobody w w was looking for you, when, when you were stuck in that, that, that ditch, when you were stuck at that home, when you were stuck in that office, when you were stuck on a certain job, when you were stuck in a relationship you didn't want to be in. God came rescue you. <laughs> he searched you. God, I'm not talking about the, the police. You're used to the police come and search your house and come and search your house. But guess what? God is a battle metro. God is a battle metro, a narcotic agent. He come and find that stuff. Because guess what? When you're trying to hide it, he under that. When you're trying to flush it, I know where you flushed it. <laughs> when you're trying to do that thing on the ground, I see you. I see you. You could hide from everybody else. <laughs> hey, when God is coming after you, that old bloodhound, you can't hide. You can't, you can't uh, uh, mess up his, his trail that he has on you. God is coming to you. He's chasing you down. What do you got to do to chase you down? Like I say, you got to put you in that hospital. What are you doing to chase you down? He got to give you some pain. He got to give you some emotional strife. He got to give you some mental problems. He got to chase you down by that way. He's using those things as providential ways to get you where he needs you to get, where he needs you to be. Don't despise what's happening in your life and don't think it's strange. Don't think in an accident what's happening in your life that God is trying to get your attention. Matter of fact, he didn't try to get your attention once, bear, twice, three, four, five times. He's still coming after you. After you even threw him away, after you pushed him away, after you even cussed him in his face, after you put your hand in his face, he still come after you. <laughs> what kind of love? What manner of love is that, kid? <laughs> that God would come after a filthy person like me. <laughs> I done done this to God. I done done this to other people. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't just did some evil and wicked things and God can't pursue me. God can't get me out of them clubs. God, before he can restore you, you got to come rescue you. <laughs> you got to come rescue you. And point two, we're talking about that recovery. We want to echo these lyrics from one of my favorite. Everybody like this song. Miss Linda, you probably, y'all probably already know what I'm about to say. You know, uh, this man named John, John Newton wrote a song called Amazing Grace. And if y'all know anything about his life, I watched the movie and it, it, it showed a little bit about his life where he was a slave owner and he did some wicked and godly things. But God grabbed a hold of that man <laughs> and made a sinner into a saint. <laughs> Made, made this man write one of the most famous hymns uh, ever in history. 
amazing grace. And this is what he saw. He knew what God was talking about when God, when, when God is out there to rescue. He knew what this said. Let's, let's, let's see what this says in uh, just one of his, the parts of this amazing song, Amazing Grace. He says, amazing grace, y'all. How sweet the sound that save a wretch like me. You see, some of y'all don't think y'all a wretch. Some of y'all don't think y'all, 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 just, y'all just tore up from the floor. You're walking in here with some brand new clothes, but you tore up. You're walking in here with a brand new car, but you tore up. You're ratchet. And I ain't saying this. Read that Bible, and you're you going to find Read through these Psalms. You're going to find out that you got some pride. Read through Romans. You're going to find out what's really dwelling inside of you. And you need a savior to, 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 to rescue you from those things that God got a, a, a hand on punishment for. And I'm talking about sending Jesus Christ for your soul. <laughs> but he also says that save a wretch like me. Oh, well, I once was lost, what? I once was lost in what? But now I'm found. <laughs> this man knew that he was lost. If you look back in your life, if you see if you really belong to Christ and you look back at your life and you can see a, a, a point, a time, a, a, a segment of, in your life where God came and touched your life, where God came and rescued, where God uh, 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 recognized, give you some recognition within your own mind that you have been lost. <laughs> when I recognized that I had been lost, and that somebody found me? I don't know about y'all. Y'all didn't been lost somewhere? Y'all didn't be, I, I remember in the kid in the mall, but I lost my mama, but I was hurt. Mama, where you at? <laughs> and furthermore, if you've been lost in the woods, that's even, if I didn't been in some woods where it's so dark you can't see your hand in front of your uh, face. And I don't know about y'all, when I seen my boys, I heard my boys sh sh shivering through these woods, I was glad I was found. Then furthermore, if you be in them waters and them jungles, you be in that Gulf of Mexico and you're lost, can you imagine how it feels so good to be found, Lincoln, to be found? <laughs> Even further than that, when you have been found, not only found by somebody, but the, what, what, the, what the Coast, Guard, Coast Guard do when they find somebody stuck in the Gulf or the Atlantic? They cover them up, they feed them, they shelter them, they, you, you need some help, you need some uh, 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 medical attention. Even further than that, look what God does when he found you. And we're going to get into that. He restores your soul. <laughs> he restores your soul. What, what, I, I kind of say this again, but we're going to say it a little slower so it can sink down in your mind. <laughs> what, where, what do you need to be rescued from, and where have you been rescued from? You've been rescued from the club. You were, you were shaking your tail feather. And God can't tap you on the shoulder. Hey, 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 you don't belong in that. You, you, you're in the club, they got thousands of people, but you're still feeling alone. You, you're supposed to be having a good time, but you're depressed. You're supposed to be, that. You, the, the time before you was having a good time, but this time now, it just don't make sense. And I'm talking about my life, because that's, that's what God did to me. I'm in the club, supposed to enjoy, and be enjoying myself, but nothing happening. People shaking and popping, and doing everything around me, but I'm depressed. Did God come rescue you out of that club? <laughs> Did God come rescue you out of that drug house? God come break down some doors like he was about to do a kick door and come grab you. It wasn't the police come and grab you, it was that Lord come and grab you. And guess what, he can do better than the police. But sometimes he used the police to get your attention. When you're in the back of that cop car, when you're in that jail cell, you, you, start, <laughs> you start thinking about a few things. Not that I've been there, but I heard about it. But where have God rescued you from? That schoolhouse. Some of y'all have been in high school, junior high, college. Some of y'all getting your GED. Some of y'all at these community college. And God is knocking on your door right now, trying to get your attention before you have to go through all the pain and suffering that we had to go on, brothers. The, 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 the agony, the pain that I had to go through before Christ came and grabbed me. God is trying to get your attention before you got to go through that pain and suffering and that, all that other stuff. Young people, pay attention. <laughs> is God trying to rescue you out of the schoolhouse, that schoolhouse? Where else? Is he trying to get you out of that corporate office? Is he trying to get you on that job? 
by sending somebody that know about Jesus. Now, every time you pull up by them, they say something about Jesus. After a while, you, 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 you start liking, you start receiving, and God start ministering to you on that job. Hey, Ken, on that job. Have God rescued you from that job? <laughs> you, you, you was talking, messing with all the other guys. You was, you was doing this and that with all the guys, talking that man talk, talking that filthy talk. But did God come rescue you out of that stuff? Did, have God made you uncomfortable around that situation to where you can't talk about that no more? It just don't feel good, Miss Mary. Has God rescued you out of that uh, 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 job? And I, and I say corporate office because God can reach those big dogs up there too, you know. How many people you know got millions? Miss Charlene got millions and billions but jumping off of buildings. How you got that much money and want to take yourself out? Don't you think God is trying to get those people this attention? He, 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 he traveling through all those wise of cash. He's traveling all through all those number of big time cars that you got. He's in that big 15 room mansion trying to knock at your door. Come to me. Rescue you. Let me rescue you. Let me take you from this misery. You see, everybody think that when they get this and get that, that is going to answer these, 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 this call that God has in your life. It's, it, you think that's going to fill that hole, that, that the void that you have in your life. But money can't do that. <laughs> Stuff can't do that. Because when you get it, after a few months, it's rusting and it don't have the same time. You want something else new. And then also, when you got it, it don't feel like you think. <laughs> it don't feel it. Because you're worried about your stuff now. You can't go to sleep because you're worried somebody's going to steal your stuff now. <laughs> uh. Has God been knocking at your door in that big house? Mr. CEO, Ms. CEO, Ms. President, Mr. President, have God been knocking? If he, if, if, if he can wake up, uh, 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 golly, you, What's that boy name? Now, uh, Pontius Pilate. If he could give his wife a dream to tell the Pontius, don't you think he could give a dream to the president's wife, to, the, to that CEO's wife, to that CEO's husband? Don't you think God could get the attention of, of that person by those ways? And God could do miraculous and, and amazing things, things you would never conceive or, not, or never think of. God could do those things, my people. I got 30 minutes. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> we had to be rescued or recovered whether we wanted to or not. <laughs> I, I sometimes see them shows when, they, when, they, when they, uh, they're trying to repossess them cars. Them boys repossessing their car whether you want it or not. <laughs> Y'all seeing it? Them boy, them people repossessing them boy truck, that boy getting that truck, ah, blah, blah, taking the tow truck and everything with it. This is what God do in your life. Whether you come uh, scraping, whether you come fighting, whether you come in resistance, God got to rescue you. And you, 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 you can try to, 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 to fake it off. You can try to, to stop it. You can try to not receive that call. But guess what? God is going to come and get you. Some of y'all, some of y'all just hand the keys over. Some of y'all, y'all, yeah, my car is here. You can come get it. I, I ain't paid this and about. It's right here. Some of y'all, <laughs> y'all hide it behind your grandma's house, behind the other car. Y'all hide it in the, y'all, 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 <laughs> y'all park it at the car wash that's, that's 10 blocks from your house. <laughs> I've heard stories. <laughs> heard stories. But if God is coming to repossess your soul, <laughs> after you're fussing and fighting, after you cut up, you're going to be glad that God can't rescue you. You're going to be glad that God back up his tow truck and got you out of that mess. You're going to be glad. Trust me. You're going to be glad. You're going to be glad. You ain't going to return that salvation. You ain't going to bring that back to Walmart. Uh-uh. You ain't bringing it back to Target. Uh-uh. You're keeping that. You're keeping that. This is a famous scripture, but let's read through it, my people. Matthew chapter 18, verses 12 through 14. How think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray, do it he not leave the ninety-nine, <laughs> do he not leave the ninety-nine 
and go into the mountains and seek it that which is going to street. That's how important it is. So one soul, one soul saved by God, the heavens rejoice. One soul. So when you see in those people, when you, you concentrate on numbers, God is concentrating on that one soul, that one person. That's who you need to have uh, in mind. You see, you don't think you're that important. You don't think uh, you, you, you are of some uh, value to, to, to this world, but you want to be of value to God and Christ. You want to be of value to the God of this kingdom. You want to be of value to him, because when he thinks you're valuable, he go get you. He leave all the 99, Miss Mary, Miss Lou, he leave all the 99 to go get you, to go get you. Whether, where, wherever you at, he come and get you. That's how important it is. This is what the scripture says. And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoices more that the sheep, more, rejoices more of that sheep than of the 99 which went not astray. When he gets you, man, you know how happy God be? <laughs> when you, 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 you finally accept, when you finally say, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, you know how happy Jesus be? We worry about our family be happy. We worry about this and that be happy. The ministers and deacons be happy. Yeah, we happy. We worry about that. But you should be thinking about how happy God is that you accepted him. God is rejoicing. God is throwing a party. God is throwing confetti. God is, is giving, making more presents available for you. I don't know about you, but I, I, I think that is a great thing. When, God, when, when, when I accepted him, when, 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 when I, I, I was found by him, Miss Linda, when I was found by him, he rejoiced. <laughs> he rejoiced. I don't know about y'all, but y'all should, should give God a hand clap. When God can't get you out that specific place, he rejoiced. He threw himself a party. Oh, Miss Linda saved. Miss Mary saved. Oh. <laughs> he threw some confetti on top of him. In verse 14, he says, even so, if, even so, it is not the will of your Father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones shall perish. <laughs> so when you minister to that soul, when you're in the hood, when you're at your job, when you're at those family uh, re reunions, those family functions, know that God, when you are ministering to them people and they accept it, God, in his wonderful ways, is rejoicing. Know that. Let's go on to point two. Now we can talk about restoration, my people. In verse three, it says, he restored my soul. Remember, we have said the soul is the innermost part of you, the part that nobody sees, the part that is uh, the, 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 the person that you are when nobody is in there with you. When you're in your room by yourself, when you're in, in that work, when you're in that car by yourself, the innermost part about you, you that only God knows and you know. Not even the people that's most closest to you don't even know the innermost parts of you because, you know what I'm saying? The heart is deceitfully wicked. You don't even know yourself. But let me tell you something. Somebody knows everything about you. <laughs> because he made you. He made you. Wonderfully made. He didn't waste no time spending the, the cheapest thing to make you. He, 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 he gathered up the most expensive things to make you. He, he gathered up like, like, like when we do in a car. You know what I'm saying? They have cheap paint. They got expensive paint. They got cheap rims. They got expensive rims. They got cheap engines. They got expensive engines. God used the most expensive things to create you, my people. Wonderfully made. So when you're looking in the mirror, when you're, you're thinking about yourself, know that and say to yourself, God made me. You think you don't look good tonight. You think you don't, when you look in that mirror, you, you, you're not satisfied with how you look. When you're looking in your driveway, when you're walking around your house, you're not satisfied with those things. But tell, let me tell you something. When you look at yourself, you are wonderfully made. God took his time to make you. Matter of fact, before the foundations of the world, he was thinking about you. He was gathering stuff. Like David gathered stuff from when Solomon came. 
God was thinking about you before the foundations of this world. Before this world, this flat earth was created, he was thinking about you. <laughs> we, 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 we think about that, that girl. We think about that husband. We think about that wife. Are they thinking about me? When we try to text them, when we try to call them, they answer their phone. Are they thinking about me? But let me tell you something. When, when you ring God's phone, when you text God, he, he's answering. He's sending a bunch of texts. These scriptures are a bunch of texts to you. He's texting. He's writing love letters to you. I miss you. <laughs> we don't talk like we used to talk. <laughs> Ain't nothing more special to a person than a handwritten uh, uh, letter. Because it's personal. God is writing handwritten letters to you. <laughs> I don't know where they come from. <laughs> Minister Brown, I thought I was hitting a note, big dog. <laughs> Phil! <laughs> I was, y all, y all, Phil can sing, y'all. You be climbing, but he got a little note in him. I don't know what note, but it's a note. <laughs> I was listening to that Rance Allen. That's what it was, baby. I was listening to that Rance Allen. There's something about the name Jesus. You, ah. I'm going to mess y'all up, man. It's going to start raining in here. <laughs> I'm trying not to climb, yo. I'm sweating. Okay, uh, where I was, verse 3. He restored my soul. The most simplest definition of soul is a combination of the mind, will, and emotions. The mind, the will, what, 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 the, the set of beliefs you have in your heart to will and make it happen, the will, what, your, 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 your mightiness, your strength to make stuff happen, the will, and your emotion, you know what your emotions is, which are very fickle and you shouldn't be guided too much. Your emotions have a purpose to let you know what's happening, to, for you to feel stuff and you don't ignore your emotions. <clears throat> Men don't ignore your emotions, but also don't trust in them too heavily. <laughs> So, so God came in to correct some things. You see, in verse 12, uh, Romans 12, 2, he says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Matter of fact, y'all need to read all chapter 12. I always give y'all homework, but y'all never come talk to me. I'm going to start paying <laughs> a, a, a nickel. I thought I was going to say dollars. But anyway, read Romans chapter 12. Y'all read it good. It's real good. It, show, it shows a lot. Romans, matter of fact, try to read Romans if you can. It's going to take you a little while, but try to read Romans. Romans is great, 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 great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> but another definition is it means interpreting life through the lenses of God's words and inspiration of the Holy Spirit rather than, I'm talking about the renewing of the mind. I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> spitting off stuff. An inspiration of the Holy Spirit rather than through the lens of your experiences, woundedness, trauma, preferences, or the opinions of others. And we're talking about the mind, the renewing of the mind. I thought this was an amazing thing. I love reading Spurgeon, Ms. Linden. I, I, I seen Spurgeon. This, for, for me, me, me and, me and uh, Deacon Chavis, Deacon Kevin Chavis, Kevin James. Is it James Kevin Chavis? Well, I'm saying your whole name. Like I'm telling the police where you're. Well, yeah. yeah, his name is James. <laughs> he was born in his social security. <laughs> but the renewing of the mind. Spurgeon says about the mind. And I, I say that, Ms. Chavis, we, we always talk about it, it amongst ourselves. Like, you know, we, we some knowledge junkies, you know. We read about everything. We find out about everything. We just constantly trying to seek knowledge, you know. Although I, I've learned that knowledge puff it up. You got to watch it. And also, you know, you got to be careful, you know, because knowledge with action is wisdom. And that's what you want to learn, wisdom. You want to take the knowledge that you, you know and, and, and put, put legs behind it. 
Show some action behind it. You don't want to just know stuff, because I thought just knowing stuff was good enough, but that's not good enough. That makes sense? It's not good enough just knowing stuff and you're not doing nothing with it, because the only thing it's doing is making you more profit, thinking you know more than other people. But this is what Spurgeon says about that type of mind. And this is the mind that we, we should not have. He says, to know is not to be wise. <laughs> Many men know a great deal and are all greater fools for it. <laughs> That's what Spurgeon said. There is no fool so great a fool as a knowing fool. That's something, huh? But to know how to use knowledge is to have wisdom. <laughs> Ain't that something, y'all? Y'all go read that in Spurgeon. But furthermore in the mind, uh, the way you think, your perception of things, your philosophy of things, this is, this is how you think. This is what goes on in your mind, especially before Christ. What, what, what can affect your way of thinking that needs restoration? Your experience in life dictates how your mind works. Let me see it. Your experience in life, how, you, how many things and what things you experience in life dictates how you think. You meet a person who grew up in the suburbs and didn't, didn't have no nothing, no, no trials, no tribulation, is going to think different than a person that grew up in the hood and always had things coming their way, always hearing about shooting, always hearing about murders, always hearing about seeing drugs and drug users. They're going to think differently. <laughs> your experience in life, your woundedness, your woundedness, when people did stuff to you, whether it was physically, whether it was spiritually, whether it was mentally, when people wound you, it affects how you think. Because when you, 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 you're dealing with a people, Miss Linda, you're meeting a person, Lincoln, and, and, and you, you, you're wondering how they think, why they think this way, what is going on, and the guy gives you wisdom, or you find out about what happened to them in their past, where they got wounded in a certain situation, now you look back and you be like, oh, all right. <laughs> you, 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 you talk to, to the ladies that, that's in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and you're wondering why they're still acting like a young girl, but something happened to them while they're in their life when they was a young girl. And it affects them till this day. Same thing for boys. Something happened to you where your daddy or a man did something, this and that. And as an adult, you go back and you look at that man's life, and that's what happened to that man when he was a youngster. <laughs> whether it was good or bad, whether it was positive or negative, it affects how your mind thinks. <laughs> it affects it. Your woundedness, your woundedness, the trauma that you experience in your life, all the things you saw, all the things you had to experience, you having to grow up early, you having to grow up young to take care of your young kids. Your, your, your mama was this, your, your daddy was that, but you had to grow up fast, you had to do things that a child should not have to do, and it affect how you are today as an adult. Trauma, when somebody did something to you, I'm not going to speak on the, 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 the things that we're hearing about that's been done to them young kids today. Trauma. Trauma affects how your mind thinks. I'm talking about even physical trauma. You got an accident, you got hurt, you, you had this or that. It affects how you think in the future. Trauma. Trauma. Your, 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 preference, your preferences shape your mind also. Which, which you prefer, which you like. It shapes how your world is perceived. How you live in this life is shaped by your perception of things. You could perceive a thing and it keep you from going to another situation. Your perception of things will keep you from flying. Your perception of things will keep you from riding certain cars. Your perception will keep you from dating this color person or that color person. Your perception of things will have you doing things that you don't think you would ever be doing but your perception has been changed, altered, messed up, polluted. That affects how your mind thinks. I'm saying all these things to let you know that your mind needs to be uh, uh, restored. Your mind needs to be fixed up. Your mind needs to be corrected. Your mind needs to be put in order. Have you ever thought within yourself, man, why do I think like this? I don't even know why I think like this. I'm, 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 I'm seeing the truth behind it in this scripture, uh, uh, Kent, 
but I still act in a certain way. I'm still thinking a certain way. I have things in my mind, and I don't even understand why that. God needs to restore your mind. I don't know about y'all. I'm a thinker. My mind is always going. Actually, it's hard for me to go to sleep some kind because my mind is always rolling, you know, calculating, figuring out stuff, trying to, you know, come up with things, just thinking about things that happen to me in a day. You know, if, 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 if your mind is, is, is messed up, you're going to look at everything in life through what happens in your mind, through your perception of things. You're going you're gonna to live a certain way behind the perception that you have in your mind. You're going to treat people a certain way behind the perception that you have in your mind about this and that, about that. Experiences, your perception of things. And we got to know that. Your opinion of others. <laughs> your opinion of others changes how your mind thinks about things. When you see a person, you have an opinion about that, you're going to think about that person. <laughs> when you have a set certain belief in your mind, an opinion about somebody, you're going to look at that person a certain way through them lenses about your opinion uh, uh, for that person or a group of people or uh, 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 a certain, uh, 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 you know, financial uh, uh, person about a person. Because when you see a person with this and that, you're going to treat them a certain way. <laughs> when you see them, I, I, I see people and, and got no attention to, no, no, pay, no attention to this certain person. But that person pull up in front of church with a brand new car. Oh, man, where you been? Oh, you know, it's, it's just funny how money do things. But your opinion of a person changes how you think about that person. And it governs how you think about that person. Our mind. I see we only gonna get through this first little piece, show. But let's go to another part about the mind, Miss Miss Vanessa and Miss Cynthia. Black black people, we, we we think this is a taboo subject about mental diseases, about mental problems that black people have. You see, black people, we got all these same mental problems. Because <laughs> we the race that that should, I ain't gonna say should, but we the race that has the most mental problems, but we don't talk about it. You see, the mother races, they go talk to people, they pay for money for them, they go talk, they tell everybody their business. <laughs> but it, 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 it's another thing why they're kidding themselves, that's another thing. But they have those things right. Other, other races, they go tell their, their, their problems. They go sit down and talk to somebody, man, I need some help. Or they even ask them for help. Us, us Hebrews, we don't ask. We, we, we just walk in the way to you when you're somebody, you know, they shoot up the whole neighborhood but they didn't talk to nobody. We blow up, we explode. We, we have things happen in our life, whether it's physically or mentally, and we're not talking to about it, nobody. We got some mental problems, we got something going on inside of us. Now I'm talking about depression, anxiety, things that we could keep uh, the stability of our mind and look at. But when you lose the stability of our, of our minds, that's another thing. Those things need to be restored also. <laughs> Cause I didn't, I didn't see any people, I didn't, I didn't talk to people that didn't, before Christ, they was having a problem. They was in mental institutions. They was in Vermilion. They was in Pineville. But God grabbed a hold of them and changed their minds. I'm talking about even the DNA, the, the chemistry of your mind. Do you know if 1% of your chemistry is off in your mind, you will lose it? 1%. That goes to show how God is balanced in, in making you and how, how, how wonderful he makes you where it has to be balanced. Because when the serotonin levels, when the dopamine levels, when, the, when, the, when those things are out of order, you're going to be doing some things. We might have to go get you. We might have to go get you in the woods right there. Do your mind need to be restored in that way also, my people? <laughs> when you see people right there, you do you pray for them? I see them pass in front of the church all the time. I'm praying for them cats, man, because I've been in there. I worked in familiar. I know how that looks, and I know the stability of your mind could be gone in a millisecond. Because they didn't have people off the streets. They didn't have people, presidents of banks, Ms. Vanessa, all in the same territory. Something triggered that mental disease, that mental uh, uh, disturbance, the, 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 uh, uh, and, and, and it's amazing what causes those triggers. You could be having a great mind. Sanity has never been broken. A divorce happened. You lose your job. Somebody dies. That's, that's what it takes to snap. 
Now, do your mind need to be restored? <laughs> After all the stuff you didn't saw before Christ, all the stuff you didn't seen, all the stuff you, you looked at, all the stuff you experienced, all the things that happened to you, you don't think your mind is kind of <laughs> need a little help? Need a little polishing? Need some new oil? Need some air in your tire? I don't know about y'all. But I'm glad God restored my mind. Not only restored my mind chemi chemically, but he restored my way of thinking, Chris. Because I used to have some mess up thinking. I ain't going to say it because y'all going to be judging me, you know. But everybody in here has had a, a jacked up way of thinking. Whether you want to admit it or not. <laughs> Whether you want to admit it or not. Tonight you're going to go back and, and look in your collection of things, Brother Joshua. You're going to go back and look in the back of part of your life and, and ask yourself, is my way of thinking messed up? Or have uh, uh, my way of thinking in the past been messed up and thwarted, been disturbed and polluted? Have. If you be real with yourself, you're going to say, yeah, 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 yeah. Matter of fact, today you're going to, uh, look, I ain't going to lie. Every day I need some changes. I was in my, 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 my closet earlier, kid. I was bare, TP. I was, Lord, Lord, restore my soul. I need some help, because look, if you be real with yourself, if we put what goes on in your mind on that TV screen right there, <laughs> you, you, you. <laughs> if you be real with yourself, you need some restoration. <laughs> you need some restoration. But God, I think this is Malvoulet lit scripture, man. But God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, oh, Christ died for us. When you had that messed up way of thinking, when your mind was messed up, nobody can control you, not even the medicine was working that the doctors and the psychiatrists was giving you, Christ died for you. Did you know that? When you was cutting up, when you was cutting up, God, am I going to just do the mind? When you was cutting up, I got to finish the will and emotions, y'all. When you was cutting up, when you was in your sinful ways, <laughs> when you was doing them wicked things that only God knows, when you was to this one house, that one house, when you was at the club, when you was, you know, doing your things that <laughs> we can't even mention on this pulpit, Christ took them beatings for you. Christ took them stabbings for you. Christ took that pain for you. <laughs> when you was ungodly, you see, we think we got to get right, then come to Christ. But nah, that's not, that's not possible. Even me and my wicked and foolish ways knew that. <laughs> Before Christ, I said, man, I can't do this. When I looked at these, these commandments, when I looked at this word, I was like, man, there's no way I could fulfill these commandments. There's no way I could walk this Bible. I realized that myself before I accepted Christ. And I said, boy, I need some help. Today, do you need some help? <laughs> do you need some help? Or you got it on your own? <laughs> or you're telling God, I got, I got this. I got this. I, I could fix my mind. Yeah. These chemicals, I could, you know, I could take me some Kava Kava, I could take me some St. John Ward, I could take me some chamomile, I could take me something that, correct, yeah, yeah. But the foolish thing about it is, those things you take, God got to make them work too. <laughs> Ain't that something? I used to think that I'm taking all these vitamins and God spoke to me. You know I make them, I make them vitamins work, Anthony. I say, okay. <laughs> Cause, cause, cause you've taken things, you've, you've absorbed things, you've, you, you've been hooked on things that sport had, would have supposed to have made you insane. What's supposed to have made you messed up? There's some things that somebody, some people, some people put in your drink that you're supposed to have lost your mind, but God didn't let it happen. <laughs> I know I'm sitting here today because I didn't been some place, I didn't been in them club, I didn't drunk some things that I wasn't supposed to drink, and God kept my mind. Thank you, Lord. You can drive on your own. You could walk on your own. You could talk on your own. You could sign your name. You could count money. <laughs> you could speak to your family members. You could recognize them. 
These things could have been taken away in a blink of an eye. <laughs> Ms. Lou always pray this. The, 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 stabi the, 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 the stability of your mind and nobility of the mobility of your limbs. How many of y'all didn't had a break a broken limb? How many of y'all didn't had some pain in your body? And when you when, when God corrected it, you was like, Lord, please thank you, Lord. I'm glad I know how it feels to feel good again. Musicians, y'all could come up. I'm not going, I'm not going. I just got the mind, y'all. I, I was supposed to go so further. Phil, did you speed up that time, Philip? <laughs> but God in his wonderful ways, my people, he not only rescued you, <laughs> he told you to this church. <laughs> he went and told that broke up, broken down uh, vehicle, which was you, that broken down soul, and told you into this place. Now, this ain't the only place that's preaching the gospel. Now, this is the only place where you, 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 you can get saved. You can get saved by somebody sharing the gospel in any place, anywhere. But today you came in here <laughs> for God to, to, to do something with you, to correct something, to, to, to restore you. And if you be real with yourself, you need some restoration. <laughs> You need some restoration. You need some things fixed in your life. Whether you're shaking your head, yes or no, you know in your life you need some fixing. There's some things in your life right now that you need fixing, but you can't do it. There's some things that you need fixing in your life. You, you don't have the power and strength to do it. You want to change. You want to do better. You want to get right. You don't have that power and strength within yourself. You think you do, but <laughs> the last time you did it, you was right back doing the same thing. Because the power of God wasn't there. But, 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 but God in his mercy and grace did something 2,000 years to restore the relationship between man and God. God in his, 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 his mercy, God in his love, God in his infinite uh, 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 love towards you. Before the foundation of the world, he had things planned to where you was going to be here and you was going to accept that gospel. You was going to tell God, I need some restoration. I need some change and I need some things fixed in my life. I can't do it on my own. And that's where God said, all right, I could do something with you. <laughs> all right, we could get this job done. All right, I could change your rims. I could change your engine. I could change your life. But also, further than that, I could change your life. I could change your mind. I could give you peace with your God. And that's through Jesus Christ, the Savior. Jesus did die on this cross for you. See, God, being a just God, has to judge that sin. And because you are full of sin, because you have multiple and layers of sin in your life that you are doing and participating in, God has to judge those sins. <laughs> but God, that's amazing, huh? God sent the answer. God has to judge, but he also sent the answer. Ain't that something? That's, that's beautiful. God has sent his son to take the weight and, and judgment, the wages. God sent his son to take that thing upon himself for you. And I'm not talking about everyone as a whole. Yes, I'm talking up corporately, but God died this for you. God didn't die for your mother on your behalf. God didn't die for your sister on your behalf. God died for you. Ain't that something that God, the, the, <laughs> the making creator of everything you see, would want to have a relationship with you? I'm not talking about a, 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 a fair weather friend relationship. I'm talking about a, a real relationship where he meets you, where he changes you, where he provides for you, where he gives you the direction, he leads you and guides you in the right direction into righteousness, into paths of righteousness, what we're going to talk about further in this scripture. That's a good God, my people. The God that would stop the weather so you can make it to Bible study tonight. 
the God who will ordain things in your life so you can spend more time with him, whether it's reading, praying, whether it's coming to Bible study, whether it's fellowshipping in a group. God ordained those times so you can spend with him. So the only thing you have to do to receive these benefits so you can receive some re restoration is you have to accept Jesus Christ in your life. And it's simple as ABC. We always say it as simple as ABC. A, you got to admit, you got to admit some things wrong. You need some restoration. You got to be real with yourself. If you're not going to be real with others, be real with yourself, man. <laughs> be real with yourself. Ain't nothing like to be in denial of what's going on with yourself. Because I've been in denial and that's a bad place to be. When you're in denial that you have some things going on with you, that you need some, some correction, you need some restoration, God can't do nothing with that. But if you need God to give you faith to believe in what I'm talking about, ask God to give you that faith. And that's how amazing he is. He gives you the faith to believe in Jesus Christ. B, you got to believe that Jesus Christ did die on this cross for you. He took those sins, he took that beating, he took that ridicule, he took that, that sassiness, he took that cussing and that vile things for you, man. He took that. Nah, 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 nah. Y'all don't talk to them. Y'all talk, God's saying, talk to me. I'm gonna take that for them. I'm gonna take the charge, kid. That's what God is saying, I'm gonna take that. And you gotta believe that in your heart and see you gotta confess. And what we're going to do right now is say the sinner's prayer. And it's not the prayer that saves you. It's the heart behind the prayer. We're going to say the sinner's prayer and then I'm going to pray for those also. Those believers that need some more restoration. You need a little bit more work. <laughs> you need a little bit more uh, tender love and care. You need a little bit more juice in your life. A little bit anointing in your life. That's what we're going to pray for after salvation. Everybody on the sound of my voice, put your head down. Close your eyes. Security got you. Nothing won't be happening up in here, including myself. Repeat after me. Lord, I need thee. Save me. Make me new. Restore me. Restore my relationship with you. Fill me up. Cover me. Guide me. Direct me. Balance things out in my life. Thank you. Forgive me. And I love you. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Lord, I'm just pleading on the behalf of everyone in this sanctuary. Everyone also that will be looking at this sermon on YouTube, websites, Restore my people, dear Lord. Restore them to their first love, dear Lord. Whether in their mind, body, emotions, dear Lord, I'm asking that you correct it, dear Lord. The things you've done for me, Father God, do it for my people, Father God. Father God, I'm asking on their behalf, Father God, fix these situations, Father God. Father God, fix the families, dear Lord. Fix the relationships, dear Lord. Fix the job, Father God. Fix the financial problems, Lord. Father God, cancel a lot of cancer, dear Lord. Father God, get rid of, Father God, all the diseases and ailments, Father God, that these people today are, go, are going through, Father God. Father God, correct it in the name of Jesus, dear Lord. And Father God, we want you to correct, Father God. Unity amongst the believers, Father God. Father God, we need you to, Father God, instill unity in our people, dear Lord. Father God, Father God, you make it right, dear Lord. Father God, make our people, Father God, lovers of each other, dear Lord. 
And Father God, we thank you there, Lord. Father God, get my people safe back home tonight. Let their houses and wherever they may be going, Father God, be better than Father God when they left it, Father God. So Father God, thank you and Father God, reward the people for coming out tonight, dear Lord. Father God, give them what they desire, dear Lord. And Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you, Father God, for our pastor, the ministers, the deacons, first lady, all the servants, people that Father God working for the Lord. Thank you for them, dear Lord. We honor them and we appreciate them tonight, dear Lord. So Father God, thank you, dear Lord. And everybody say, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Love y'all, y'all be safe. Thank y'all.